السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke the truth. He was sent to us by Allah to deliver the goodness that Allah had revealed to him. To this day, anything he said, if we were to study it in order to be able to practice and preach, we would be elevating our own status. So I want to go through a powerful narration of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam today. That is a hadith of Abu Malik radiyallahu anhu, which appears in Sahih Muslim. And you know when we say Sahih Muslim, they say, uh, it is obviously, we know, it is a book of hadith that is authentic. So when I say this hadith was narrated by Muslim, you know what I'm referring to, right? I'm referring to the fact that it is in a book that was compiled by an imam known as Imam Muslim. Muslim ibn Hajjaj al-Qushayri. He has a, a, a nice long name. Now, sometimes some people lie. They say anything and everything. And they say it was narrated by Muslim, meaning one Muslim fellow down the road, you know. That is not what we talk about. When we say narrated by Muslim, it doesn't mean one Muslim fellow narrated this. No, it means Imam Muslim in a certain book and it's authentic. So let's go to this hadith. It starts off by speaking about cleanliness. The hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu says, At-tuhuru shatrul imani Which means, cleanliness is half of your faith. It is a large portion of your faith. Now, Stop for a moment. If I were to tell you cleanliness is half of your faith. Today with the coronavirus, they are asking you to be clean. Wash your hands and so on. We wash our hands so many times a day, right? We wash our faces, our feet and so much more. They're telling us now. Subhanallah, Rabbil Alameen. People might think for a moment that when we speak of tuhur, it is only referring to physical cleanliness. We say physical cleanliness is a portion of it. But that's not the only thing that refers to cleanliness or that cleanliness is referring to. If I say, brother, clean your thoughts. Does that mean you take your brain and put it under water? Subhanallah. Does it mean that you're actually going to drink a bit of soap and shake your heads? No, not at all. It means your mind needs to be clean. If I were to say clean up your act, your act meaning your movements, your physical, whatever you're doing, anything, clean it up. Don't misbehave, clean up your act. If it is in business, we are supposed to have clean deals. Do a clean deal. Don't cheat people and deceive. So there's cleanliness in every single aspect of life. When it comes to our dress code, we've got to dress in a beautiful way that depicts the morality and the values that we stand for. Then you've cleaned your act. Subhanallah. You cleaned your dress code. Your mind is clean. Your, you know, when a person thinks, they use the term dirty. When a person thinks dirty, we will tell them straight away, you have a dirty mind. What do they need to do? Clean it. The hadith says, you're a Muslim. Well, I tell you what, cleaning your faith, meaning cleaning yourself, is actually half of your faith. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. My beloved brothers and sisters, this is why when the Prophet ﷺ says something, every aspect of its meaning is True to the full extent, subhanallah, cleanliness to clean your mind, clean your eyes by not looking at that which is going to disturb you. Clean your eyes by not looking at that which is immoral, that which is going to displease Allah. Beautiful verses of the Quran. On one hand, Allah says, tell the believing males to lower their gazes. When it comes to something you're not supposed to be looking at, look down. Allah says, relax, look down. Because your eyes connected to your mind and your heart, you don't want to contaminate your heart. 
So what you do, look down so that your mind is clean, your heart is clean, your system is clean, your lusts and desires are under control. Because when you see something, you know what? The hadith says, it is like the arrows of the devil. And if you, that spear is going to be released, you're going to want to follow that animal. Anyone here been out hunting? I'm sure being in South Africa here, many people have been out hunting. You see that animal and you see it close. What do you do? You pursue it until you nail it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. That is permissible when it comes to hunting. But when it comes to certain things, you cannot have everything you want. You cannot have everything you see. It's not yours. Allah has not kept you on a level that you can have everything. You might afford to buy a car and someone else cannot afford to buy a car. And maybe you cannot afford to buy a certain level of a car. So you need to know the level Allah kept you at. Be happy. Thank Allah. Life is very, very short. So short, we know this world is in existence for millions of years. The exact number, I don't know. But I know millions of years. Man is so insignificant that he can only be here for an average of 60 to 70 years. That's how insignificant man is. Do you want to know who lives longer than you? Or let me word it more correctly. What lives longer than you? The tree in your yard is probably there for hundreds of years. It saw your great grandfather, your grandfather, your father, you, your child, your grandchild. And it will also see your great grandchild. That's the tree. I'm not encouraging you to go there and chop it off today. No. But my brothers and sisters, the point I'm raising is look at how insignificant we are. Man thinks he's a big deal. Man, you're only going to be here for 60 to 70 years. Then you have to prepare to go back to Allah. Subhanallah, may Allah make it easy for us. Many people leave early. They leave very early. Some people have a bonus. They live beyond 70. That is literally the gift of Allah. Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wants you to prepare for the meeting with him. Which is going to be by far the best day ever for a believer. The day that he's going to meet with Allah. That's the best day ever. You said your shahada. Yes. You sought forgiveness of Allah. Yes. You tried to obey Allah. Yes. You tried to stay away from prohibitions. Yes. You sought the forgiveness of Allah constantly. Yes. Then you have every reason to smile because you were just a human being who was a believer in Allah. He's going to be happy to see you. Man ahabba liqa Allahi. Whoever loves the meeting with Allah, Allah loves to meet that person too. You're looking forward to meeting with Allah. I swear by Allah, Allah is looking forward to meeting with you according to the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu May Allah grant us Jannatul Firdaus. So, At-Tuhuru Shatrul Iman, your cleanliness of every aspect, every sphere is half of your faith. Your faith. You also clean your acts of worship by doing what? Making sure you don't worship things or people or whatever else besides Allah. Because to enter into the faith, we say, لا معبود بحق إلا الله لا إله إلا الله. You want to become a Muslim? They say, Did you declare your shahada? What's a shahada? أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا رسول الله. I bear witness that. What's the translation of it? That there is none worthy of worship. Think of that statement. What did you just say? There is no one, nothing worthy of worship. Which means, I'm not going to worship anyone or anything besides Allah. That's the statement. Shaitan makes you forget that very fast. We start worshipping things. We start worshipping people. We start worshipping sticks and stones. No, don't lose that. Clean your act. At-tuhuru shatrul iman. Clean your acts of worship. They should be only and solely for Allah. Simply because there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. Subhanallah. And in, the, in that way it continues. That hadith within it. There is something mentioned that is extremely interesting. The Prophet ﷺ has taught us the remembrance of Allah. And in the remembrance of Allah, there is benefit for us. When you say, Alhamdulillahi, Alhamdulillahi. When you say, Subhanallahi, what does it mean? It means, all praise is due to Allah. That is Alhamdulillah. All praise is due to Allah. 
I was bitten by a wasp a few days ago. The first thing I did, and it was on this baby finger here, you might see a mark if you're close by. The first thing I said was Alhamdulillah. Why? It could have been anywhere else. Imagine if it was my eye, my lip, my mouth, my face, everything was swollen for two, three days. Yeah, by my, by my finger. And I'm saying Alhamdulillah, I thank Allah that I was given an instruction and teaching by Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to thank Allah upon all conditions. Do you know on the day of judgment, a caller is going to call. Aynan kanu yahmadun Allah fi where are those who used to praise Allah during times of ease and during times of hardship? Something hard happened, thank Allah, it could have been worse. Something good happened, thank Allah, it is only from Him. La ilaha illallah. You're a believer. You're different from others. You believe in Allah. Nothing bad that has happened to you can have been, subhanallah, from anyone besides Allah. If something bad happened to you, it was in the control of Allah. He allowed it to happen. Maybe something you did might have caused that to happen in the sense that Allah might have inflicted you with something as a result of what you did. It's possible. We know of punishment. Punishment is the truth. It comes in this world and it will also be in the hereafter. But we also know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us something. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ Allah will not punish them while they are seeking the forgiveness of Allah. If something negative happens to you, seek the forgiveness of Allah. And the condition of your heart will determine whether it was a punishment or not. If your heart is made distant from Allah because of something that happened to you, that is a punishment. And if your heart became closer to Allah as a result of something that happened to you, it was the biggest blessing. Whether positive or negative is besides the point. You know what that means? Some people get a lot of money. They get a good job. They have a lovely family. They forget Allah. That's a punishment. Why? It was something that looked positive, but it drove you away from Allah. It took you to the clubs and it took you to bad habits. If that's the case, it was a punishment. It's not a blessing. Something looking good was not a blessing because it drove you away from Allah. And on the other hand, something that was looking so bad, you lost your job, you lost your limbs, you had an accident, someone passed away, etc. If it made you come for salah and change your life, wallahi, that was a blessing from Allah. Anything that brings you close to Allah is a blessing. That's why sometimes a person gets sick. And he's a wealthy guy. And he says, I'm going to the doctor. Go to the doctor. Doctor says, we're doing all the tests. He said, yes, we're doing the tests. He gets the MRI and he gets this done and that done. Pause for a moment. May Allah grant shifa to all those who are sick and ill. Say, Amin. All those who are sick and ill. And may Allah protect us all. Amin. So he gets everything done and you know what? Uh, they don't know what's the story. Why? My brother, you don't do your salah on time. You're not worshipping Allah. You're far from Allah. You're engaged in sin and so on. And Allah loves you enough to make you realize that it's only in the hands of Allah. So you'll go to the doctors and you should. But if nothing happens, nothing comes out one after the other. And then the doctor tells you, you know what? You only have six months to live. A person who... That statement draws closer to Allah is actually blessed. And the other one will get frustrated, start questioning Allah. Why are you doing this to me? Why me? I've got little children. Forget about it. You're not the first person with little children who's got six months to live. And by the way, when they say six months to live, it's not even cast in stone. Because you might live for another 60 years. Who knows? It's only a statement. They might be totally wrong. They, how many people have left, for example, healthy and they've died without a problem? And how many people have been told 24 hours to go, 24 years still? They're saying, Salam alaikum, Buddha. <laughs> MashaAllah, may Allah grant us ease. Rely on Allah. If anything brings you closer to Allah, it is a blessing. So remember, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. These are great praises of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. The Hadith speaks about how Subhanallah and Alhamdulillah they actually not only fill the scales, but they fill in reward the space between the the skies and the earth, just by saying Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Subhanallah.
get into the habit of praising Allah. كَلِمَتَانِ خَفِيفَتَانِ عَلَى اللِّسَانِ ثَقِيلَتَانِ فِي الْمِيزَانِ حَبِيبَتَانِ إِلَى الرَّحْمَانِ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَبِحَمْدِهِ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ الْعَظِيمِ Hadith, the last hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, the Prophet ﷺ says, there are two words that are very light on the tongue, very heavy on the scale, very loved by Allah. سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَبِحَمْدِهِ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ الْعَظِيمِ You praise Allah and glorify Allah the greatest. Allah says, just by saying that with your heart, it's something extremely heavy. Now this hadith in Sahih Muslim is telling you that that statement will fill between the earth and the skies in reward. How many times are you prepared to say it? Repeat it every day. Praise Allah. Praise Allah. الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Beautiful verses of the Qur'an where Allah praises the believers and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us very clearly that those are the ones who ponder over the greatness of Allah shown by the greatness of His creation. You know, when I say I'm looking forward to the day I'm going to meet with Allah, what is the reason? Because when I look at the scenery and the nature on one hand, when I look at the creation of Allah on the other hand, when I look at things that I like, when I look at things that I like, so much beauty and so much goodness, subhanallah, I think to myself, if I am intrigued and impressed by what Allah has made, imagine how intrigued and impressed I'm going to be by meeting with Allah Himself. You follow what I've just said? You see something nice. Hey, what do we say? Mashallah. Brother, look down. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> and then the guy will say, No, 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 no. I, I'm just saying, Inshallah. Subhanallah. May Allah grant us ease and goodness. May Allah make us people who are considerate. Amen. So I tell you something. Imagine if you see something that impresses you when you see the creator of all of that. Oh. May Allah grant us the beauty and the sweetness of that day. So the hadith continues and you know what it says and I'm going to actually get right to the end of this hadith because I want to make a, a specific point. It says, Kullu nasi yaghdu. Everyone, all people, they get up in the morning. What do they do? They leave the house. First. You're going to go out, right? In the morning. Early morning you get up. Fine. What happens on the day? What happens on the day? Allah says, during that day, every single day, everyone who gets up on the day and you've got life, you sell your soul. That's what you do. You sell yourself. You sell yourself. You work. You do something. You get up. What do you do? You do something. You're breathing, right? You either sell yourself in a way that you freed yourself from the fire or you have enslaved yourself, trapped yourself and imprisoned yourself into hellfire. It's your choice. Allah says every day you will get up. By the end of the day, you, on that day you sold yourself. You did something. Whatever you did during the day either freed you from hellfire or got you trapped into it. That's the hadith. Look at this. So why I am saying we need to go back to the words of the Prophet ﷺ. When you sleep in the, in the night, what's the dua? You say, Bismika Allahumma amutu wa ahya. Right? And the a narration says, Allahumma bismika amutu wa ahya. Okay? Oh Allah, in your name, I, I die and I come alive. Do you know that sleep is actually considered the small minor death. Because according to the correct verses of the Quran, your soul and its attachment to the body in your sleep is not exactly as its attachment when you're awake. Allah says it in the Quran. Allahu yatawaffa al-anfusa hina mawtiha wallati lam tamut fi manamiha Allah takes the souls away. Two times. When a person dies, soul is gone. And when a person sleeps, the soul is taken. 
How? I don't know. But it's not exactly like that death. It's a smaller, minor death. Do you know why? Allah says, فَيُمْسِكُ الَّتِي قَضَى عَلَيْهَا الْمَوْتَ وَيُرْسِلُ الْأُخْرَى إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّى Allah says that when you're getting up in the morning, Allah sends back. In fact, He holds the souls of those who've passed away in their sleep. So it's gone. And if death is not written for you in your sleep, you know what He does? He actually sends that soul back for a period of time. Because you still have life written next to your name. That means when you're sleeping, your soul and its connection with the body is not the same as when you're awake. Now when you get up in the morning, Allah's just given you a new day. Allah has given you what? A new day. In order to prove yourself to get closer to Allah and when you go to sleep that next day, by that time you would have known, did I waste my day or did I use it correctly? If you wasted it, the loss is yours. فَكُلُّ النَّاسِ يَغْدُوا فَبَائِعُ النَّفْسَهُ فَمُعْتِقُهَا أَوْ مُوبِقُهَا Every single one of us, we will come out. We have to actually get up in the morning. We have to do something. We have to go out to achieve. We, we are breathing. We go to work. We do whatever through the day. You can never ever survive unless you get up out of your sleep and out of your bed. Because you need to eat. You need to go to the bathroom. And so on. And you know what? Allah says, well, during that day, you either sold your soul to the devil or to Allah. Basically, that's in a nutshell the meaning. It's up to you. Today, wh what am I doing? Wallahi, we're all lucky. We're fortunate. We are in the house of Allah. This, if our intention is right, we are selling our souls for Allah. Right or wrong? Don't spoil it. Don't contaminate it. When you leave here, Make sure that you've kept it that way. And Allah will grant you ease. Allah will grant you goodness. Care for people. Talk nicely to others. Respect people. Help others. What are you doing? You're selling your soul to Allah. For Allah. To Jannah. To paradise. The minute you head in the wrong direction, tell yourself, Allah gave me today. I might not have tomorrow. And let me not sell my soul to the wrong side. I'm walking away. The strongest of us is the one whose heart desires and has an urge to do that which is displeasing to Allah, but they abstain solely because they want to please Allah. You know, there was a certain brother who came to me. He said, you know, I used to be an alcoholic. Listen carefully because I'm sure we might relate to this with some people. I used to be an alcoholic. I quit it for the sake of Allah. But now I miss it. Subhanallah. Am I allowed to say this? He asks me. I said, brother, don't say it to anyone. There's no point. I'm glad you're being honest with me, but I can help you by telling you every time you miss something or you want to do something and you know that this is displeasing to Allah so you don't do it, Allah writes a reward for you. He writes a reward. Why? The hadith says it clearly. Man hamma bi sayyiatin. Whoever wants to commit a sin. Hey, I really want to do this. I really want to do this. Whether it's drugs or adultery or gambling or whatever else it may be. What I spoke about now, alcohol, whatever it may be. You want to do it because the, the, the shaitan within is driving your lust and desire towards it. And then the hadith says, if you stay away only because of Allah, he writes a reward for you. By doing what? I just sat and my brain was thinking. That's all. My brain was thinking. I almost got up, but I didn't. Allah says, for you is a sitting reward. Sitting reward. Because you quit something and you didn't do it for the pleasure of Allah. May Allah make us such that we are clean. We praise Allah often. And at the same time, when we sell our souls, we sell it for Allah, to Allah. And we earn Jannatul Firdaus by the mercy of Allah.